Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm doing one of the sessions out of the Road to Worlds program. So today is actually day four of our lower body program. It is kind of coming back into a new week, coming off a deload. I must say I'm a little bit nervous about the potential time that it's going to take us to get through today's session because I have added an additional core exercise. So usually my normal training, I've got one core as a kind of a maintenance volume. But for Worlds, I know that that's an area that I need to develop. So I've added a second core. I've thrown back in all the smaller isolation muscles. So like my calves, which I kind of normally don't train consistently. I might have a program where they are in there. Then I might take them out if I'm focusing on other things that I enjoy more. So there's a lot of work to get through in today's session, um, but I'm sure you're really going to enjoy it. Um, I am going to be going through the myo rep training method. A lot of you guys have been asking about myo reps, why do we do them and how to execute them. Despite my best efforts to describe it in the program, it really is one of those things where it's a lot easier to see it being done than just read it off a description. So I'll be covering that today. We'll talk about a couple of the different exercise variations, why I've got them in there, how they might be better than something else, or if they're able to better target a certain muscle. I say, let's get after it. So I went pretty light last week, but I also did my hack squat regular facing out so it's been a little while but I'm going to alternate back and forth week to week between a reverse which is what Teresa just did and a standard hack squat just for some diversity with muscle group recruitment so um, the regular hack squat last week where I'm facing out um, that's a little bit well I'm intentionally targeting a little bit more quad um, so now that I'm going to flip around and do a reverse hack squat it's a bit more booty. Last time you had a 45 on one side and a 25 on the other. Yeah. So you want I'm gonna go another 45 and then 10. Yeah. Oh yeah, that feels a bit heavier. <laughs> <sighs> So real quick actually, since I'm in this wonderful position, girls, when you are doing this exercise, try not to finish in a extended position like this. See how that hit angle is more than 95? We don't want that. That is not going to um, optimally activate your glutes. We want to be finishing with a right angle and that's probably going to require you to really tuck your tailbone under. You're keeping your chin down and squeezing. Uh, one of my girlfriends, um, she has quite uh, little legs, so she has to put blocks up to help her achieve that position, otherwise she is finishing like that. So if you need to put some bricks under your feet to achieve that 90 degree, do it. Ha! Ah. Got a grunt, that was hard. <laughs> this is already um, 10 pounds heavier than what I did last week. Uh, if I went any heavier today, I don't think I would be working to the, the recommended RPE for this week. So today's session is uh, an RPE 8, or if you're using repetitions in reserve scale, which is how the BioLane Workout Builder programs, uh, you've got two reps in the tank. And this is right there. So I'm not gonna go up this week. Uh, I will save that for next week when I know I've gotta hit a RPE 9. <sighs> Get another nasty exercise next. <laughs> Banded RDLs, I think, is our next movement. So we kind of alternating here: quad, glute, hamstring. So a little bit of setup with a banded RDL. You want to make sure that you've got all of the catch bars kind of clear out of the way, um, so that you've got plenty of space to move. T's going to set the band up. Uh, probably at about knee height is a good spot. Um, that's going to differ for person to person, obviously, but it really sets you up in a good spot to activate your glutes. So this is still an RDL. It's still primarily targeting the hamstring, but the extra band around your hips, 
uh, ensures that there's constant tension. Um, so unlike a normal RDL, when you come to the top, there's kind of no tension. You're just standing. And maybe you're contracting your glutes and holding your core if you're doing good form. But this makes sure that there is never a point during that movement where there is no tension. So again, it's just increasing the load subtly. It's just another way to add more time under tension, increase volume. Um, and that specifically activates the glutes a little bit more than a regular RDL. So I love this exercise. <laughs> so I like to do a mixed grip for these if I'm not using a wrap. But as I get heavier, I'll put my wrist wraps on or straps um, so that I can do a double overhand grip. It's just a little bit more, I guess it keeps you in a neutral position. Whereas when you're a mixed grip, you are kind of rotating a little bit. So hence the difference between a warm up and a working set. <laughs> so I kind of like walk it forwards a little bit just to increase the tension on that band. And you'll notice that I really squeeze and tuck my tailbone under to grab your glutes. The body positions are still really challenging, but it's just so different than lower body. 100% agree. I like truly look forward to it. <sighs> These are just so energy taxing. <laughs> this is um, one exercise that I feel like my strength oscillates quite a bit. Do you notice that with this? Yeah, I do. I think it depends like where in your program it is. Yeah, I would say for sure, because if we have like deadlifts or something, another deadlift movement before these. Yeah. Lower back fatigues. Uh, yeah, they're rough. Did I rant about this last time? I feel like string bags has been on the forefront of my mind a lot. When gyms are like string bags only. Like how can I fit everything that I use in one session? in a string bag. <laughs> why did all the exercise, oh I know why, looking at the wrong screen. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I just trolled you all the way from the other side of the gym. I did. I was like, <laughs> I did not see you, I never see you. He gets so upset because apparently he's been like trying to get my attention for like 20 minutes. Now I'm just using it to buy a <laughs> I don't see him because like when I'm training, I'm like focused. Just literally, like, He'll be like, like sitting right there and I'm on this machine and I don't see him. Looking directly at me and just not registered. Oh, that's my husband. <laughs> Quick prayer. So I think you can really cheat on those as well. I mean, I never used to use this weight. I've definitely improved strength over the last 12 months on this and are now at the stack, which is like winning. But um, something that I have really tried to focus on um, is when I'm driving my knees out, the same way when you're squatting, like uh, you're bracing. So you're really trying to limit the movement through your torso and you're trying to maximize your glutes doing the work. It's like. You can push your body forwards, you can get momentum. It's like we're not butterflying, <laughs> so core strong girls, and that will really help activate your butt. Where are we? Day four leg extension kickbacks. You choose, I don't mind. They're all occupied mostly. Uh, well, the tables are open unless you want to wait for this girl to get off. Leg extension. Let's do the glute kickbacks. Okay. Yeah, we've got the plank with the alternating leg raise today. So you notice in this exercise, I get pretty close to the cable, just so I'm nice and stable. The closer you can get, uh, the more strength and power you're going to be able to generate from your core, so that you can successfully isolate your ass. <laughs> Feel it start to creep into your back on the last set last few reps, isn't it? 
like your glutes are just gassed. Your back's like, hello. Maya reps after this. I see the leg extension free. I'm gonna go and snag it. Um, so let me quickly explain, uh, I guess, this next exercise. So it's a very basic leg extension, but we're gonna use a training method called Maya reps. So I guess, ooh, it's a lot of salsa in there. Um, it's really helpful, I think, if you're trying to get through a lot of volume in a short period of time. So basically this gets you working or performing like an activation set um, to failure. So you choose a weight that is going to get you close to failure or near to failure for 12 to 15 reps. So that's going to be different for everybody. You're going to rest for 15 seconds or a couple of big breaths and then you're going to perform a set of 6 to 8 which we'll call that the Mayo rep set. So you do your set of six to eight with good technique and then you're gonna rest again for another 15 seconds or a few big breaths. And then you're gonna go again, another Maya rep set of six to eight and you're gonna do that as many times as you can um, before you can kind of no longer perform a full set with good technique. So last week I did these and I think I did four Maya rep sets in addition to the first activation set. It might be similar this week, um, I don't know but um, it basically helps you train, I guess, in an effective rep range. Um, some of you may have noticed when you're doing like your first six to 10 reps on a regular leg extension, it's pretty easy. And then you start to feel that, um, I guess, the fatigue kick in for the last few reps. So this basically gets you working um, in a fairly short period of time um, in that effective rep range. So we're just doing one set here today um, based on the amount of time it's taken me to explain this to you, I probably could have just done three normal working sets. But um, it's very good if you are on a time crunch, um, you know, or if there's a lot of people waiting for the machine, you can get a lot of effective reps in um, with good volume and achieve good volume by doing this method. So here we go. Whew. All right, so that's my first activation set. Just going to rest for a hot sec. And then I'm going to burn my legs off. Yeah, yeah. It's nice that these are only one set. I, have kept, I always think we do more than one set. No. If we've had, um, if we've needed to achieve like overload, I've put in two sets, but generally you don't need to. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, okay, that will be my first Mayo rep set of six to eight. Yeah, I remember doing two, two sets of Mayos on these with you once before. We had like press Mayos as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you can see my extension is starting to shorten. This is probably going to be my last set because I'm not performing them full, re full range of motion. Fuck! Or not. Just fun. 
done. One set. Let's see if I can manage 12 reps here. <laughs> partner at the gym, stand on their feet, and they'll be able to actively use their core and not their hip flexors to try and stay on the ground. So reverse grip, it's wrapping from the inside. I do thumb over grip. So with these, you're really trying to focus on spinal flexion. Thank you. I think a lot of the time, I guess in the fitness community, people are like, oh, you don't want to round your spine for anything ever under no circumstances. But to effectively isolate your rectus abdominals, so the superficial muscles of your core, Halfway. you actually need to contract forwards and round to do that. So you want to minimize movement through your hips and tuck round with your spine like T so she kind of comes into a bit of a hyper extension to fully lengthen and then she's tucking under and I try and focus on squeezing my elbows together when I come in to really activate and tense my core oh dear what do we have this little plank block? raise yeah a plank with uh, elevated toes raise these go quick they do this is our last exercise for this program. It is just a regular plank. However, to make it a little bit more advanced for those of you that have been training your core for a while and you need to progress, we're just gonna incorporate um, a little leg raise here. So I think the key thing to think about is again, not allowing your tummy to drop down during the movement. You wanna keep it braced. You wanna keep your tailbone kind of tucked under and really you're kind of squeezing from your glutes when you're lifting those legs. You don't want to let go through your core and tummy. They're a lot harder after doing the weighted, weighted plank, uh, weighted crunch. I'm going to get another 10 minutes walking, otherwise I will be sedentary for the entire day. Uh, and currently, like I've just done that full workout, my step count this morning, I'm only at 4,000 and from here on for the rest of the day, I'm truly not moving. So it just goes to show, based on what your job and your occupation is, how like inactive you can be. So yeah, I've got to really push to get a normal amount of steps in so that I'm expending calories. That's why it's often so hard for me to get lean because I just don't move. So that's it guys, thanks so much for tuning in. If you have any questions about today's workout uh, or you want to hang out with Tia a little bit more, she's got her own YouTube channel too. She's been doing her YouTube series for her uh, competition series. So yeah, go follow T. Also make sure you're following Team BioLane, um, our coaches team. So T is one of our coaches uh, here at Team BioLane. And uh, yeah, I guess I will see you next week, hopefully looking a little shreddier, a little leaner. That's the goal. I'll probably be a little slower as well. <laughs> But uh, until then, I will see you next week for week three of the Road to Worlds.